the discrete time Fourier transform gave us a frequency continuous spectrum, but this is not where we want to go. We want um, a digital signal processing system. So we um, need to reach a point where also our frequency domain is discrete. So um, we have already learned that periodic signals discrete, frequen uh, discrete frequencies. We use this property for our Fourier series. So remember, you, you can apply a Fourier series to any periodic signal like a rectangle, s a square wave signal, or a triangle signal, or a sine or cosine signal, and you can decompose each periodic signal into its monochromatic components by using the Fourier analysis and the Fourier series is then uh, way back the um, superposition of each monochromatic component to the periodic signal. Then you've learned about the continuous time for your transform which can be applied to non-periodic signals and this yields a continuous frequency spectrum. And now um, we come came from the time continuous domain to the time discrete domain, so we are now after sampling. And we learned about the discrete time for your transform for a non-periodic time discrete signals. And then you see there is one cell missing in the table here for periodic and time discrete signals. And this is uh, the topic of our lecture t uh, of the video here. This will be the discrete Fourier transform. Or in short, DFT. The discrete time, uh, uh, sorry, the discrete Fourier transform is used to uh, transform per periodic signals, which are sampled, so in time discrete, to the frequency domain, and we will obtain a discrete frequency. Um, spectrum. Yeah, so our signal will be time discrete and periodic. And our spectrum will now be discrete two. So the spectrum that we um, obtain now will fulfill both properties. It will be discrete and it will be periodic. So what's the purpose of um, our DFT or discrete Fourier transform? So imagine that you have an analog input and we have an analog to digital converter which applies sampling and then we get a signal in the digital domain. So we have a dis uh, time discrete time domain signal and now we apply the discrete Fourier transform and we obtain a frequency discrete frequency domain signal so and the purpose of 
in this is that we can use a computer to process the signal. So we have a time discrete time domain signal, uh, which has some, which can be represented by um, digital data. Let's take here the, the hexadecimal notation. And now we apply the discrete Fourier transform and we get a frequency domain, a uh, frequency discrete signal too, like this. Yeah, so this, the DFT will be very important for uh, uh, digital signal processing and for processing the signals in computer systems in general. So what's the background of the DFT? We have learned about um, the Fourier transform of, of any function so now it for now it doesn't matter if it's periodic or non-periodic and now we apply the discrete time for your transform and uh, the sample data is a direct comp um, in general and the for your transform will be a periodic spectrum And now for the periodic function, the sample dat data is of course periodic. And now we apply the duality, which you have learned in chapter two. And as the DTFT is a special case of the continuous time for your transform, we can use the duality here too. And now you see that the bo uh, both terms periodic are interconnected and so the spectrum of our sampled periodic function will be a direct comp too. And now really the spectrum is I recomp. It has value at some certain frequency points. Here too, and here there's also value and here. And the values in between those discrete frequency points is zero. This is the same principle that we had with sampling. So now we have the case that we have a frequency discrete spectrum two. This is another illustration of this. So here in the in the uppercase we have a non-periodic signal we apply the regular discrete time for your transform and we get a frequency continuous spectrum which is periodic um, the periodicity is the sampling frequency here remember that you can also use the GP periodicity and now we consider the boundary case for periodic time domain signals. So in here we have a periodic signal. The period is n, so as we have discrete uh, time discrete signal, we can also define the period as an integer value. 
So n is now an, an integer, like one, two, three, or four, and so on. And now we apply the discrete Fourier transform, which is a boundary case of the discrete time Fourier transform. And we get a frequency discrete spectrum here, which is periodic too, as it is uh, the Fourier transform of a uh, sample signal. And the periodicity is again n. So it's the same integer as the periodicity here. And now let's have a look at the formal definition of the discrete Fourier transform. It is defined by this equation. You will also find this equation in the lecture notes. And of course, there's also an inverse um, discrete Fourier transform, which converts the frequency domain signal back to the time domain. And first, there's an interesting point here. So for the frequency domain signal, we don't use and continuous frequency parameter like omega or phi. We discard this continuous frequency parameter um, in favor of a discrete frequency variable. So like the discrete time index here, we use the um, uh, discrete frequency index k here. And in this part, you see, you may notice the similarity with the discrete time for your transform. So indeed, this is a special case. But for the inverse transform, it looks a bit different, so it has here again a discrete sum instead of the continuous sum, so the integral, because we have a discrete frequency domain signal here. So what does our discrete frequency variable mean? So we first remember the Z transform which used the complex frequency variable z and we set the magnitude to 1 for our uh, steady state case which is used for the discrete time for your transform and for the discrete for your transform so what remains is the argument of z which is our unit circle and now we pick only discrete values out of the unit circle with equidistant spacing. So the spacing in measures of an angel is equal. So this is called the nth primitive root of unity. So we have n n green circles here. So n points on the unit circle. And for in this case, which we see here, n is 8. Okay. So this diagram just perfectly what, what we've got for the case of an periodic time domain signal. So we have eight or, or in general n equidistant points on the unit circle which define our discrete frequencies. And uh, these discrete frequencies have special properties. So at first the angel of our dis discrete frequency is can, can be calculated by this. So this is our discrete frequency. This is our continuous frequency. 
and remember that the value of the DTFT will be zero for any values of phi here, which are not our discrete frequencies. So, and this is the exponential function which is used in the notation for the DTFT. And using the um, discrete frequency index, the, this notation expands to this. And we can prove that these primitive roots of unity yeah, these are the primitive root, uh, roots of unity form an orthogonal basis for the vector um, which we obtain after the DFT. Yeah, so orthogonality will is a very important term throughout the lecture and um, the mathematical background is written in the lecture notes in chapter 4.1.6 and um, I hereby ask you to read the chapter. It, it is very interesting, it contains all the mathematical background and we will require this property of orthogonality later to describe some modulation techniques. Um, so now let's again come back to this vector. Um, what is it? Um, imagine that you have a sampled time domain signal which is periodic and uh, so you can extract a series of the samples which repeat and then you can rewrite the uh, series of samples as a vector and now you give this vector to the discrete Fourier transform yeah so uh, and this vector is is not uh, unlimited it has a certain dimension which is the periodicity n yeah. So it has a, a finite length. And now the output of the uh, this discrete Fourier transform is x with a capital letter. And you can also rewrite it to a vector. So because the spectrum or the, the frequency domain signal is now periodic too and now you can rewrite this by this vector and again this vector has a finite length which is the periodicity n and this, these ru r um, primitive roots of unity are a basis for this vector. Mathematic mathematical background is in the lecture notes, so refer to this. In lecture two, or in chapter two, we learned about a lot of mathematical foundations to describe signals and systems and to operate on the signals using the cross correlation auto correlation and to calculate the energy spectral density and power spectral density of signals we considered all these aspects for continuous time signals but we can also apply these concepts to time con uh, time discrete signals too. 
So, um, it is analogous to time continuous signals and systems, which we have learned in chapter two. But uh, there are some differences we use the uh, discrete time for your transform or the discrete for your transform instead of the continuous time for your transform and the Fourier series we use a time discrete signal instead of a time continuous signal and in most cases we use the discrete sum instead of the continuous sum But apart from, from these differences, we can apply the concepts analogous to our time discrete case too. Again, please refer to the lecture notes to find all equations referring to these terms. They look similar to the equations which we have learned in chapter two. The concepts are the same, so this is why we don't go through this again here. And you will see that the equations look very similar to the time continuous case of chapter 2.